FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. Right now, our regular Monday guest, he is an expert on foreign policy. He's with the D.C. International Advisory, dciadvisory.org. Mr. Stephen Yates, good afternoon to you, sir. Hi, Dana. Good to be with you. I have to. This was. This is, of course, a huge issue that uh, it seems both parties are fighting over. Uh, we, we played audio earlier of Robert Gibbs suggesting, and then David Axelrod has suggested this too, that, that somehow Republicans have politicized Osama bin Laden's capture and killing and all of this. But Honestly, I, I think it, it was it was this administration, it was the Obama campaign which politicized this. They came out just the other day with an ad where they misquoted purposefully and they chopped the quote in half Mitt Romney to make it appear as though he would not have done anything. And so they're using this to say, I'm sure you've seen this, oh, well, Mitt Romney just, he wouldn't have caught bin Laden. He wouldn't have killed bin Laden, but Barack Obama would have, whereas... Romney's stance and his, is actually a little stronger than Obama's. What do you make of this, and how do you view uh, the spin that's coming from the left on this issue? Well, it is entirely spin. I hope it hits most Americans the way it does me. I think most common sense people uh, hear this kind of uh, junk, really, and it turns their stomach. I mean, we had a serious attack on the United States that killed serious numbers of Americans. We've had thousands of Americans sacrifice their lives in response uh, yes, Barack Obama was in the Oval Office, actually in the Situation Room, as this as this uh, this hit was executed on Osama bin Laden. It was a good it was a good execution of a, a person who was responsible for many many deaths. Uh, really, from that point forward, it's actually been the Obama team that, in response to any question. You talk about the debt, you talk about health care, you talk about everything else. The only thing they got is. I killed I killed Bin Laden. I killed Bin Laden, and I think it's really kind of grotesque. Right. Well, and 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 exactly, it is because this is this. They, I believe, Democrats excoriated Rudy Giuliani uh, right after when he campaigned uh, on 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 uh, on nine eleven with how well he ran the city. He actually, I mean, that was part of his record. How he responded to the nine eleven attacks, and he was excoriated by Democrats over it, and they claimed that he was using it to score political points. And then this, it seems a contradiction. Yes. No question it's a contradiction. And I think it's also no question that it was the Democrats and Obama, and, and Obama his team, that began politicizing this really from the get-go. Because in my assessment, I may be a conservative and come at it from a particular point of view, but really when you look at the world, there is no relationship, ally or adversary, who's got a better relationship with the United States or making more progress with the United States now than was the case in 2008. Right. Uh, and so really on foreign policy, they just don't have a lot else to go on. The attack on Romney is disingenuous and grotesque spin on one level, but there's a substantive point to be made. If anyone really believes that the death of one man ended the ideology of radical Islam and the violence that came out of it, that also is dangerously foolish. Uh, so really, the clip that they played of Romney was not a bad or inaccurate clip. It was just taken violently out of context for political purposes. Right. But for Team Obama, if they think that the war on terror is over, or more accurately, the terrorist war on us is over, I think that's quite a dangerous idea. Well, one of the other... Uh stories that has come out, a smaller a, a, a sub-story, if you, if you will, that's come out of this whole issue is this memo that Time Magazine got a, a hold of. We, we wrote about this over at Breitbart.com and it was written by Leon Panetta, then CIA head, uh, when he received orders to uh, greenlight the Bin Laden uh, capture kill mission. And he had said that basically, well, he's from what he wrote, quote, the timing, operational decision-making, and control are are in Admiral McRaven's hands. The approval is provided on the risk profile presented to the president. Uh, any additional risk, risks are to be brought back to the president for his consideration. It was a handwritten memo from Leon Panetta. And so now there's a lot of discussion. You know, I mean, I, I don't, I, I think that, that Barack Obama didn't stop the, the killing of Osama bin Laden, and he deserves credit for that as it happened on his watch. But the way that uh, they campaigned on this, oh, gutsy call, and then go deciding to open them, open themselves up by going after their opponent, I now wonder how much of this control and how much of the call was actually in his hands. Well, generally, the way this kind of a decision process would go uh, is that there would have to be a classified decisional document that goes up 
through the various chains of command. Uh, it would go to the president for him to sign off, but it would, act, in reality, be broad instruction. Mm -hmm. So you don't usually have any kind of a written document where the president is getting into the specifics in operation and approving use of particular weapons and particular geographies against specific individuals. Uh, and so I think that the, the Panetta memo actually is an accurate representation of the kinds of instructions that would go out. And it's true that the operational control happily was with our operators, and they succeeded in the mission. Right. So, yeah, because they, it, it seemed that they, the Obama campaign, they kind of opened themselves up to this. And, of course, you know, we talked about this this morning on CNN, and they, uh, uh, the left seems uneasy and angry if you try to point that out. But at the same time, they campaigned that it was almost as though it was just him and Joe Biden in the situation room alone. And they made every single call, every single uh, everything was under their hands. And because that's the sort of attack that they used against Mitt Romney. Um, and I don't think anyone's arguing that he shouldn't get credit for it happening on his watch. How would you put this? Right. I, I think that you have to put this into the context of what do the American people believe the style of leadership is from Barack Obama. If you just look at, say, for instance, his signature health care legislation, was it Barack Obama who went up to the Hill and negotiated the details of the health care legislation? To my mind, there's not even a single shred of evidence that the commander-in-chief read all the pages of that bill. Uh, and so if you have that kind of distant leadership, where he sort of threw the mission over to his foot soldiers on the Hill, had them do what they could, they pass it, he takes all the credit. Right. How is it really any different when you contemplate this military exercise? True, true. And it could be in a way, too, where he, if something, you know, heaven help it, if something bad happened, and I'm so glad that nothing did, but, you know, for argument's sake, if something bad had happened, uh, he would, I, I wonder if they would have still called it gutsy call or whether we'd be hearing a lot more about Admiral McRaven at this point. I, I think that is very likely the case. I mean, some people may recall it's distant memory for others, but President Jimmy Carter did order a failed raid in Iran to try to mm -hmm. rescue the hostages, and that was yet another rock in the backpack that dragged down his campaign. And certainly Obama strategists as cutthroat as they are showing themselves to be, would have contemplated that. Right. And and, and I and, and I think uh, Bush as well with, with Tora Bora. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Well, but, but, you know, this really is an interesting test, though. I mean, the country looks back on 2008 and a lot of parts of the Bush administration, and I was up close and personal with it, some of it I loved, some of it I didn't love so much. Uh, but really, no one would question. George Bush would not have personalized this so much. Right. George Bush would not have taken low blow shots at his political opponents on something like this. Right. No, that's that's definitely true. Well, we will see how this plays out. Stephen Yates, DCI Advisory, DC International Advisory. Thanks so much for always uh, lending us your expertise every Monday. We enjoy having you. Thank you, Dana. Anytime. Hey, take care.